Stay tuned. We're about to start decluttering. Hey, from my kitchen, starting a new series on decluttering. Thought this would be a great place to do it because I was supposed to be cooking dinner. So I'm kind of like doing two things at one time while the burger's cooking over there. All right, so decluttering can be a worthwhile and valuable endeavor, no doubt. But there is a wide array of benefits to the process. However, decluttering on its own is a fruitless effort. Without personal evaluation and insight, any progress you make will be more than likely undone. So we're gonna talk more about discover why decluttering won't work and how deeper personal insight can lead to a lasting change. Here comes number one. one. Decluttering doesn't require introspection. All right, so getting rid of all the stuff you have, uh, or haven't used rather, in the last year, or donating an item of clothing for each new piece you bring home, <laughs> they're short-term fixes. For decluttering methods to stick, you've got to evaluate, evaluate your reasons for the decisions you make regarding your possessions, such as making statements um, regarding your values, possessions, and I'm sorry, sorry, passions and desires, possessions too. All right, here comes the second one. Decluttering won't help you understand your attachment to possessions. That's a big deal. All right, so delving a little bit deeper, whoa, you must actually consider the personal motivations for your attachment to the stuff you own. For example, do you hold on to things because you fear being without FOMO? Further examination might lead you to the realization that you're holding on to habits from a child of the poverty, and that's okay, but now to let go of the abundance of your stuff. Right, decluttering doesn't benefit anybody else. Decluttering without mindfulness does little to help anybody else who could benefit from your overstock. All right, so taking steps to get rid of some of the things and tidy up without understanding your reasons for doing it, it doesn't really often lead to the kind of results that could come from purposeful action. When you understand what you hope to gain from this release of clutter, you can significantly pare down your possessions, get rid of stuff, allowing more people to benefit from your abundance, all right? Here comes another one. Decluttering, it's got no impact on your debt. Unless you've got a few like Ferraris laying around. You may think decluttering can help you raise some cash by selling your unwanted things. I remember when I was uh, 20 somethings and I was in the military and I would go on drinking binges with my buddies and we would save up all of our beer cans because we were broke and we'd try to get money to buy food work. <laughs> All right, so without examining your motives for acquiring so much stuff and evaluating your priorities in life, you're practically guaranteed to buy more items to take the place of the stuff you sold. Man, sure, I'm glad I cleared that out. We have more space for more crap, right? All right, here comes another one. Decluttering, it rarely leads to a lifestyle change. Mm. Mindless decluttering is temporary. Tweet, tweet, mindless decluttering is temporary. Your clean and organized environment is really like a facade that isn't likely to last. If you want to change your life by implementing healthy changes and making positive strides, you've got to first do the work of introspection. Can you say that with me, folks? Let's say it together. Introspection, introspection. All right, taking time to evaluate what has led your clutter and to consider your, your lifestyle goals will go a long way towards creating a soothing home environment that lasts. Decluttering on its own won't work, but combining it with mindfulness, well, that could lead to success. I'll see you tomorrow for the next part of Decluttering. Flip out.